All right. In this video, we're going to go ahead and solve similar triangles or find the lengths of sides of similar triangles. In this situation, I've got a set of parallel lines with a green and purple triangle. So this line here is parallel to this line here. Try not to get on my triangles. And the one thing, I, I put the angles in so that we could see that these triangles were indeed similar. So since the lines are parallel, this angle is 66 degrees means this angle is 66 degrees. Those are alternate interiors. 94 and 94, those are vertical. And 20 and 20, alternate interiors again. So we know that those two triangles, because all the angles are equal, are similar. The next thing you do once you have that is you find the uh, scalar factor. And, you, and basically a scalar factor is you just find sides that correspond where they give us the length of the side. So like this long piece here, 28, corresponds to this uh, side on this triangle, or 16. I'm just marking those for you. You could put a little box around them. So 28 and 16 correspond, so we're going to set up a scalar factor. Now you can either go big to little or little to big. Um, I'll go big to little or big to small. So I'm going to go the big triangle over the small triangle. So in our case, we know that 28 compares to 16. So there's my scalar factor. And it's always a good idea to reduce that. So if you took a 4 out, that would be 7 over 4 as a scalar factor. So now we're ready to set up the proportions to solve this thing. So first off, we would go ahead and set up our scalar factor, which is 7 to 4. And let's go ahead and find x. Well, x here goes with 12 on this triangle. Notice how they're flipped. And those two triangles are rotated, flipped or rotated around. Actually, not flipped. They'd be rotated. Uh, rotations of each other. And so you would take 7 over 4 equals, uh, let's make sure I get this right, x over 12. There you go. And so now you do common denominators or cross multiplying is probably the quickest method. But uh, we would take this side times 4 over 4, this side times 12 over 12. And, and so we would have um, looks like 84 over 48 equals 4x over 48. And then your denominators, you could multiply by 48 and they would cancel. So 4x equals 84. And then you divide that and x equals 21. So 84 divided by 4 is 21. So we know the length of this side here now is 21. Next, we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the proportion of y. And you just set it up similarly. So 7 over 4 equals, um, and so I went big triangle to little triangle, so we're going to go y over 7. And again, you get common denominators or just cross multiply. I'm going to cross multiply. You want to be careful with cross multiplying because then you have a tendency of doing it all the time. It's better to do common denominators. So 4y equals 49. And so then it, you divide by 4. And so y is 49 divided by 4. Um, I'll go ahead and just pull that up. So 49, whoops, still have my marker on. Let me delete those. 49 divided by 4 is 12.25. I think I must have had that up there already. I wasn't even paying attention. And so 12.25 is my side Y. And there's those similar triangles. Now I have a couple more examples that we can we can go with. 
I always love this one. So we have a lamppost that's six meters high. We've got this guy walking that's two meters high. You've got ten meters between the guy and the lamppost. And how I always solve these is I always draw the two triangles out. So notice this line. So here's a triangle. And then you've got the big triangle. Maybe I'll do that in green so you can see the whole thing. So there's the big triangle. I draw, I physically draw these separate from each other. So here's the green one. And then here's the blue one. It helps when you're setting up the scalar factor and, and solving them if you do this. So we know this length is 2 meters. We know this length is 6 meters. That's going to be our scalar factor. We don't know the length of the shadow, so we'll call it x. And uh, we do know this then, since that's the whole length of the side, is 10 plus x. And that, so this little piece here is x. Because you have to add up the 10 from the lamppost to the person plus the x to the end of the shadow. And so you can set up the proportion for this. So your scalar factor, if we went big to little, is 6 over 2 equals, and if you go in the same order, big to little, and we're trying to find the length of that shadow, 10 plus x over x. And you're ready to cross multiply. So 6 times x, or 6x, equals 2 times 10 plus x. Then you can start simplifying this, and I'm going to erase my triangle since it served its purpose. And we can solve without overlapping anything. So we'd have 6x equals 20 plus 2x. Then you would get your x's together. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x over. And so 4x equals 20. Then you divide by 4 and x equals 5. So his shadow in this diagram is 5 meters long. And there's that one. So let's try one more of these that's very similar and maybe even just a little easier. I don't know. But here's a similar case. So in this case DE here is parallel to BC. And so here's the thing. Stop the video. See if you can do this problem. You know, draw out your two triangles. Um, put in what we're, what we're missing. And here we're missing this side here, X. We want to find EC. So, excuse me, we better first clarify that. We want X there. So, yeah, stop it. Give it a shot. So, first off, you draw out your two triangles. So, here's... So here's the little one. I'll pull, I'll just kind of mark it. So my little one, I'll try and draw something that's similar. This is four, this is five. And then we'll draw the big one. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, beautiful. This side is five plus X because you got a five plus this X for e, AC. So this is A, this is C, and this is B. And so this has to be 6. You know, where did I get the 6? Well, that's 4, that's 2. If you add those together, that gives you all of AB, which is 6. So now we can just concentrate on these two triangles. I drew them in the same orientation, even though they're kind of ugly. I didn't do a really great job. But we can go ahead and set this proportion up. So we know that if we went small triangle to big triangle, 4 goes to 6 just like 5 goes to 5 plus x. And again, we can cross multiply. So 6 times 5. Again, you want to be careful with this, because, um, and I'll show you why here in just a second. I do it because it's just habit. That's the way I was taught. So I cross multiply everything. 
which doesn't convey much understanding of what's going on. But anyway, you've got uh, 30 equals 4 times, you know, you distribute that through. So that's 20 plus 4x. You subtract your 20. And so 10 equals 4x. So x equals 10 divided by 4. x equals 5 divided by 2. So x equals 2.5. And we've gotten, there you have it. So that's the length of um, EC. It's two and a half. I hope this helps. Um, again, that cross-multiplying, uh, the reason that's such such a bad deal is if you had 4, 6 times 3 fourths, please don't cross-multiply that. That would be 12, 20 fourths, and then reduce it. You could have cross-reduced, but... Uh, that's where cross multiplying gets you in trouble because then you want to cross multiply everything. So, best of luck and see you next time.